Well, this is a video to uh, uh, a stance that uh, a lot of people have. A few people asked me about in my questions video and uh, something that I've never really specifically addressed, and that is the whole idea behind uh, gay pride. I saw, uh, I was watching uh, another video not related to uh, economics or anything, and uh, it, was a, it was a gay person, and they said that they were proud to be gay. And uh, people had asked me in my questions video if I if I was into gay pride, and I I just said no. I didn't really analyze it any more than that. But when I heard this person say this, and I've heard this a million times, that I don't know why it never really clicked with me before. But uh, I just I I'm not um, condemning that sentiment, but I'm just saying uh, I don't understand you know, what's the point of believing that? Because if you look at, I, I, there may be some exceptions, this, but every gay person that I've ever heard discuss the matter uh, insists that they are gay um, through no volitional act of their own. You know, they didn't choose to become gay. Uh, the allegation in the in the frame of the culture war, which is a war that's increasingly not really being fought, but is is the idea that uh, uh, the anti-gay people allege that it's just a choice and the you know gay people say it's not a choice. I, 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 I was born this way. And uh, first I think it's not always true that the anti-gay people are saying that you being gay is a choice. In fact, I was just watching a, what is it, the Westboro Baptist Church guy, and he his argument was, yeah, I can. He concedes that you could have homosexual urges, quite naturally, but then you're acting on them is what he is defining as a choice. You're choosing to act on. It. So he's saying that you should rather you should choose to repress those feelings, and in that by that definition, it is actually a choice, but. In the idea of what are you sexually attracted to, that's not something that people are volitionally choosing. Um, and just a side topic here, I'm really curious as to what makes people gay because I think it's very hard to say it's genetic because we don't see it running in families. You know, we don't see, oh, grandpa was gay, dad was gay, I'm gay, my three brothers are gay. It's peppered around society in a way that doesn't indicate that it's being passed through the genes, at least not obviously. Uh, and that's not to say that people choose to be gay. It's just to say that it could be environmental factors, which again, you don't have any choice on. I mean, it could be, you know, what if you live in a really humid environment or something during a certain uh, stage of pregnancy, or um, I've heard this is one interesting thing that I've heard. There seems to be some indication, uh, if there are multiple children, which pregnancy uh, you are. So if you're the third or fourth pregnancy, the utero chemistry may be different. And there may be uh, important changes in the amount of testosterone um, in, a, in, a, in, in utero for the first son, the second son, the third son. So it's possible that... Um, that's one of the reasons, but I don't think it's ever because you know there are first sons who are gay and subsequent sons who are not, and vice versa. Uh, that's a side issue. I, I'm not saying that um, gay people are choosing to be gay. I'm just saying um, it's not clearly genetic. I mean, ha there's no gay gene that has been identified that I'm aware of. I mean, I was told that in college from by a secular genetics teacher who had nothing against gay people, he was just saying there's no gay gene that we're aware of. Although I think it might be somewhat akin to there's no basketball gene either, but there are genes that make you tall or fast or you know have a strong heart. So those aren't basketball genes, but they're genes that predispose you to being good at basketball. Likewise, there are probably genes that, though they aren't gay genes, make it so that you're more likely to become gay. I'm just, that's my take on it. I'm not saying that's true. I can't back it up. I think that's just the most plausibly likely scenario. But back to the main topic here, gay pride. 
if gayness is something that you do not choose, it's not a volitional act, it's not something that you, you know, thought about and decided upon, then there is no reason at all to take pride in it. Because then gay pride is the same as white pride or black pride. You know, a white person who's like, I'm proud because I'm white. You didn't do anything to be white. You were just born that way. And um, it's really kind of sad if somebody has to, in order to help their self-esteem, list their achievements as being white or being gay. I'm proud about my achievements. I'm proud of the triumphs I've had over my life. Not that they've been all that amazing or incredible or awe-inspiring to the masses of humanity, but I've had successes in my life, and I hope to have more, and I'm proud of all that. And I'm proud of the things I've been able to accomplish. I'm not proud that I'm white. I'm not proud about things that I didn't have anything to choose for. And that's not to say I'm condemning them or saying I'm mad that I'm gay or I wish I wasn't. No, I don't care. That's my personal preference. I like to be that way. But I'm not proud about it. That's just how I am. And, I, you know, it's not like I, I, since I didn't choose it, I don't see how that can be considered uh, a reflection on my character, something for me to be proud of. I just don't understand that. Um, and there's a whole other thing here, a little bit more general. Um, I usually don't couch terms in collectivism versus individualism, but this is a case I mean, I'm definitely a methodological individualist. It always is better to uh, analyze individuals. It's not always wrong to, uh, for the sake of um, streamlining uh, and, and conserving mental energy to have stereotypes and to have generalities. That's okay in the right context, but you want to, wherever possible, analyze work with base your uh, conclusions and analysis on individuals in which case there's no I mean other than that they're gay there's no unifying factor among gay people lots of them are losers lots of them are not losers some of them are drunks some of them do drugs some of them are uh, you know some of them are sexually promiscuous some of them are not some of them are highly educated, some of them are stupid, some of them dress, I mean, we go on and on and on and on. And, you know, to just identify with the entire group, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And genuinely, I don't identify with other groups, except when I'm making common cause with them for some other goal. So uh, if I want to lower taxes, I might go to a tax protest and there are going to be people there that I don't agree with on a lot, like evangelical conservatives or Republicans, really. But they want to lower taxes. I want to lower taxes. We can go and, uh, you know, we can support that cause. We can cooperate. Uh, but I don't see it as oh, my class is against their class, or I shouldn't be uh, aligned with them because, you know, it's against my group. I think it's very, it's very, very um, foolish to think of yourself as being a, a, a unit within a group. You know, conceptually, if we want to, think about society that way sometimes it's okay but we should never take that analogy and believe it has some kind of scientifically valid existence so uh, I don't understand gay pride I mean I think I can understand it as a psychological uh, coping mechanism like people feel like they're being persecuted and again I think a lot of that People just need to have thicker skins. You know, what... You're not entitled to have the appreciation of other people. Um, most people, most of the time, basically don't have any opinion of you. And I'm, I'm speaking of everybody. They don't care. Uh, and if they do have an opinion about you, what? who cares? 
So what? They don't like how you what you do in bed. Big deal. How that shouldn't like upset you too terribly. If you really don't like the way that they feel about you, then you know disassociate from them. Um, personally, I, if they have something I want, though, I'm going to do business with them. You know, if the guy I buy gold and silver from turned out to be an, a homophobic big bigot, which I don't know that he is. I have no reason to suspect. But even if he was, I'd still go and buy gold and silver from him. You know, because it, it's his what his potential negative emotions about my lifestyle have essentially zero effect on me, whereas his his selling me a good or a service benefits me. So you know, I'm not gonna sub I'm not gonna sacrifice the latter for the sake of the former. That just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so I I think that in a way. Uh, People who do feel those social pressures from peers, from the rest of society, which most social pressure is is in here. It's internal. It, you know, you, the most clear example is people who have social anxiety. People who have social anxiety, and I, I've known a couple now over over YouTube. I know a couple of people who have really bad social anxiety, and they to their credit, realize that it's not society that's scrutinizing them, it's them that's scrutinizing them. They think that everyone's watching them, when in reality most people are never watching them. And the few people who do watching, watch them are only occasionally noticing them. I think the gay person is thinking that society is out to get them. And so there's a need to you know, form a counter-society that's hyper-inclusive. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not. It's not morally wrong. I'm not out to stop gay pride parades. You know, that's a whole. And you know, de debating whether we should or should not have them. To me, it's a silly debate. We should be debating whether we have ro public roads or private roads, and then we don't have to worry about debates about what goes on on them. You know, when they're public, then there's this. All these questions arise. If they're private, those questions don't arise uh, but I just think that's a, a, a weird way to define yourself or to say that you have gay pride just like it doesn't make sense to say you have white pride or Chinese pride or you know whatever uh, you should be proud of your own accomplishments and uh, not not really enthusiastic about the labels you like to apply to yourself.